whereas magnesium hydroxide doesn't, even though magnesium contains more hydroxide, it's not very soluble. The hydroxide is locked in a crystal lattice. Now, crystal lattice is not that soluble in water. And so people drink, you know, magnesium hydroxide, milk of magnesia. But people won't drink lye, which is sodium hydroxide. Lye is also you know, it's drain cleaner. People make soaps with lye. And so the strengths are dictated by how much, you know. And in this case, for acid, it's how much H plus goes in the water. And so let's say I have one molar HCl and one molar HBr. Well, we have to go back and, and think about electrolyte properties. Do you know what a strong electrolyte is, right? Strong electrolytes dissociate completely. And so both of these are strong electrolytes, so they both dissociate completely to H plus and Cl minus for HCl. HBr will dissociate completely into H plus and Br minus. And so if both of these dissociate completely in water, which one gives us more H plus? Well, no, they're the same. And so if I have one mole of each, then I'm going to get the exact same amount of H plus for both of these, and that's called the leveling effect. Why is HBr stronger acid then? You know, if I'm telling you that they're the level, it, this only goes for the strong acids. The weak acids will have different degrees of dissociation. This, um, why? Well, it turns out HBr loses the H plus easier than HCl. HBr loses easier, but it's no big deal because both of them are going to lose them completely. You know, it's like um, uh, both are about the same, just one is just a slightly better than the other. You know, but both are very strong. Let's say you're a player in some kind of sport, and you know, two comparable players, but one's just slightly better, but both can get the job done. You know, this exact same job done. That kind of thing. Oh, this is the same type of situation. And so, uh, because of the leveling effect, we treat these as equal. Strong acids are treated as equal. So that's not a driving force. So do we have some other, something else? All we need is one, you know, one driving force. Do we have something else? We do. And that is silver bromide is insoluble. And so silver bromide forms a precipitate. And so the driving force is precipitation. But if you look at this, um, if you look at this carefully, this is a very, you wouldn't have gotten this particular problem in Chem 4. Um, the reason is, is because this is a complicated case. But when we're, when we're thinking about driving force, how would you sum up what is a driving force? You know, a driving force is where we go from something that's strong to weak, or in other words, strong means reactive or not reactive. Reactive. And so we're going from something that's more reactive to something that's less reactive. In other words, we're going from something that's less stable to more stable. And so if we form a, a precipitate, that usually indicates that we're forming strong bonds, which is more stable. But look at this reaction going backwards. If we go backwards, you know, this is precipitation. Then um, going backwards, it looks as if we're going to form a precipitate. And so forward or backwards is precipitation. Because chlorides, bromides, and iodides are all insoluble except for silver, lead, and mercury. And so this is precipitation too. And so is the driving force this way, or is the driving force that way? Which way is it? And so you wouldn't have gotten this particular problem because you would need a little more information. You know, the solubility rules are very qualitative. 
okay, so it's insoluble. And so silver chloride and silver bromide are both insoluble. But in this particular problem, you would have to know which one is more stable. And so looking at these two solids, which of these two solids is more stable? Because we have a conflict here in, in our driving forces. This is conflict. Which way do we go? And so the answer is we're going to go and favor the side that is more stable. Now, how can I figure out which one's more stable? Is there a book of stabilities? No. You know, stability is not a physical property that's compiled into tables. But there are other physical properties or chemical properties that might indicate which of these two is more stable. One of those properties would be solubility, but it's a different type of solubility. The, the solubility rules are qualitative. That is, the solubility rules have a cutoff. If it's less than 0.1 molar in a saturated solution, then we call it insoluble. And that means you, you have to dissolve 0.1 moles or less per liter to call it insoluble. If it's more than 0.1 molar, in a saturated solution, then it's, it's soluble. Well, we don't want to use that definition of solubility for this particular problem. For this particular problem, we have to use the actual solubility. The actual solubility is typically how many grams of this will dissolve in 100 milliliters of water. And you'd find that in a book. How many grams of this will dissolve in 100 milliliters of water? And so then, then you figure out, well, grams, you got to convert it to moles, you know, because we want to do it by atoms. Some atoms weigh more, some atoms weigh less. And so we want to see which one gives us more atoms or ions in solution. And so uh, we just compare the solubility. Which one is less soluble? The less soluble one should be more stable or less stable? Well, yeah, if it's less soluble, then less of it dissolves, which means it's more stable, the solid. And it turns out, if we look in the book or we look online, silver bromide has a lower solubility. Since silver bromide has a lower solubility, then the, the reaction has a driving force. This is called a solid-to-solid -solid conversion. Both are insoluble. But insoluble to what degree? You know, well, silver bromide is more insoluble than silver chloride. We would have had to look that up, so that's why you wouldn't have had this particular problem on a Chem 4 uh, test. Let's look at another example. Yeah. This next example will take a solid like calcium carbonate and then react this with sulfuric acid, which goes up 4. It would be a double replacement reaction here. Again, in, in double replacement, we do it differently than Bronsted. In Bronsted, we might do something like this, you know, where we go um, just transfer one proton. So we, we might form bicarbonate and bisulfate. You know, one proton gets transferred. But we, we aren't going to do that. We're going to just go ahead and, and react this all the way. Reacting this all the way, this is dichlorotic acid, this is, we're just swapping the ions here. So it's going to be um, calcium sulfate and H2CO3, which is carbonic acid. So we know something about carbonic acid. What do we know about carbonic acid? It decomposes into what? Yeah, I don't want to see this here because you should automatically know it decomposes into H2O liquid and CO2 gas. 
So is there a driving force here? Well, we have the same type of situation where the calcium carbonate was a solid, but it's being attacked here. And so the calcium carbonate being attacked by H2SO4. But um, it turns out calcium sulfate, is calcium sulfate soluble or insoluble? Insoluble, so it's a solid CO2 gas. And so we get precipitation and gas formation and stronger acid to weaker acid, you know? Sulfuric to carbonic or sulfuric to CO2. CO2 we know is a weak acid. And so in a scenario like this, what do you think? Are we gonna have reaction or no reaction? Well, this is what we have going in the reverse. In the reverse direction, we got precipitation, but then we're going from weak acid to strong acid. So does the reverse reaction look all that favorable? No. The forward reaction has a lot going for it though. Even though we are getting rid of calcium carbonate, and forming calcium sulfate, I, I got these additional things going for it, and that's stronger acid to weaker acid in gas formation. So I would think that this reaction should go. And so we, we got a driving force for this. So let's rewrite this. Looks a little bit better. equation is called the complete equation and we already specified the driving forces over there. Uh, we're also going to have to write for metathesis and maybe single replacement the ionic equation and the net ionic equation. The ionic equation we ionize or dissociate strong electrolytes. What are the strong electrolytes? Strong electrolytes are the strong acids, strong bases, and soluble salts. And so calcium carbonate, is that a strong acid? No. Is that a strong base? No. Is it a soluble salt? No, it's an insoluble salt. And so here, we just leave it alone if it's not one of those three. H2SO4, is that a strong acid? Yeah, H2SO4 is a strong acid, so we dissociate or ionize it. What do we ionize it into? Do we ionize it into 2H plus and an SO4 2 minus? Or do we ionize it into an H plus and an HSO4 minus? Yes, uh, we ionize it into H plus and HSO4 minus because what happens is uh, the protons break off one at a time. Even though this will react to completion, in water the protons break off one at a time. And if we break off one of the protons here, um, that leaves HSO4 minus. Now, do we break off the second proton? We would break off the second proton if this were a strong acid, strong base, or a soluble salt. But when we look at this, 